With great pleasure, joining me now is House Republican Whip, my friend Steve Scalise. Mr. Scalise, as always, sir, welcome back. And, you know, I'm just trying to figure out the boss is going to meet with the windmill makers, but he won't meet with the fossil fuel CEOs who could actually solve his problem. You have to explain this to me. You know what? I have two questions for you, Steve Scalise. You have to explain this to me on industry and production grounds, and then you have to explain this to me on political grounds. I don't get either. <laughs> well, Larry, first, it's great to be with you. I, I wish you were still in the White House, because when you were in the White House with President Trump, we were energy independent. We, we knew what it took to actually not only get our country independent from foreign oil, but to lower gas prices and to create a manufacturing base where we could create millions of good jobs and rebuild our middle class. All of that was happening. And Joe Biden campaign, and, and look, go back to when he was a candidate, he said he was going to stop drilling in America. He said he was going to go after the fossil fuel industry. Many of his top experts said they wanted to bankrupt the oil and gas industry. And then they set out day one, the day he took the oath of office, they set out to achieve just that, to kill American energy. And it's, it's had a devastating impact on our middle class. The answer is real clear. You open up American energy, stop begging foreign countries. You know, he was begging Putin to produce more oil. He's going to get on Air Force One. And, you know, as he's tilting at windmills here, he's flying Air Force One to Saudi Arabia uh, to go beg them to produce more oil. He doesn't have solar panels on Air Force One. It's jet fuel. Mm -hmm. And the price is so high, it's going to keep getting higher because they're cartels. They're monopolies. They don't want the price to be lower. If we opened up American energy and he had lease sales and he permitted pipelines and he permitted seismic uh, data uh, ability, if he permitted LNG exports, we would see the price lower here and we'd be able to help our friends around the world. Our friends in Europe wouldn't have to be dependent on Russian gas. Our friends in Asia. Uh, this has global consequences, but it's crushing middle class families. What Joe Biden has done because he's got people running his agencies that are part of this cult religion where they just hate American energy, uh, fossil fuel based energy. And they're getting it from other countries. They're just not getting it from America and it's hurting families. You know, Steve Scalise, um, I was talking to at least one of the participants, um, somebody who knows you quite well, by the way, because your name came up because I said you were coming on the show tonight. He didn't know that Biden, the president, was going to meet uh, with the wind turbine folks. He didn't know that. He thought maybe he was out of town. There must be a reason why Biden wouldn't meet with the seven top CEOs of America's biggest oil companies. But when he heard about it, he just said to me, he said, well, now, doesn't that just say it all? And I think that doesn't that just say it all? That's the message that Biden, look, Biden's been, I guess, very consistent about this. He doesn't care for them. He doesn't like them. And he's not going to help them. And yet he will go out in these press conferences or, for example, Jennifer Granholm, who, by the way, was not insulting. OK, uh, it was a constructive meeting, although nothing happened. She's saying they put out this press release, Steve Scalise. The secretary made clear the administration believes it's imperative that companies bring supply online to get more gas to the pump at lower prices. Well, sounds like a good idea to me, sir. How, in the, how do you do that if you can't get permits to drill, build refineries, pipeline, change the Jones? I mean, how do you do that? I mean, it's a great idea, well, but how, how does the yeah. one do that? You and I know, and it's not that complicated. She could pick up the phone, and more importantly, Joe Biden should pick up the phone call and call his secretary of interior and say, uh. issue a lease sale. He canceled the lease sale, by the way, Larry. It was Joe Biden who did that, and it's a violation of law. There's lawsuits going on right now where the courts have said he needs to move forward with the lease sale, and he won't do it. Uh, he can also approve permits. There's at least four LNG export facility permits on his desk that he won't approve, and these have been on the desk for over a year. Privately funded, multi-billion dollar projects that would create great American jobs, high-paying jobs, uh, producing energy in America, sending it to our friends across the the country and the globe to lower energy costs, and he won't approve any of those. So he's the one stopping it. He blames everybody. He's blaming oil companies. He blames Putin. He blamed the pandemic. He blamed local gas stations. Now, he's blaming everybody but himself, but the public knows better. The public has already figured this out, and they know it's Joe Biden doing this, and that's why his poll numbers are so low. But he's beholden to this radical far left who hates American fossil fuels, and that's the problem is that he can't stand up to them and tell them no. So he demonizes everybody else and crushes 
middle class families with high gas prices, high home electricity prices, because we haven't even talked about that. This is having a ripple effect on the ability to manufacture and the ability to heat your home in the summer and cool uh, to cool your home in the summer and heat your home in the winter. It's jacking up those prices, too, on families. You know, it just... Um... I mean, I'm not smart enough. I don't understand politics. You understand politics. I thought maybe Joe Biden understood politics. But this election in the fall is about inflation. It's about gas prices, about grocery prices. I mean, I know there's other issues and the border and, and all kinds of issues, parental uh, control in the schools and so forth and these CRT uh, uh, cancel culture fights. But you know what? I think the number one issue is inflation, and that is to say gasoline at the pump, which is damaging everybody. And Steve Scalise, the number one issue, inflation, leads to the, the number two issue, which is recession. Now, you, do you see, Biden doesn't get this. I mean, he doesn't understand this. So he's going to stay rigidly in the uh, greeny camp. Yeah, and, you know, some of his own cabinet and other uh, executives are having a disagreement with him. You saw Jerome Powell, uh, you know, recognizing that this is driving inflation. Inflation will be the number one issue in the election in November. And high gas prices are a big part of that because... As you're going to the grocery store, you're paying more, and that's hurting families. But when you go to fill up your, your vehicle, and look, over 90% of the cars on the road are, are fueled by gasoline. And so this idea that, you know, everybody can get an electric car, we're going to see an increase in electric vehicles. And by the way, Larry, where do you get the energy for that electric car? Mm. You don't plug it into a tree. You plug it into an outlet that's probably generating fossil fuel yep. uh, power, and they're taking that away. And so the price keeps going up. People know that Joe Biden's policies are driving it, and they're angry. They're angry about the border, too. They're angry about parental involvement in kids' education. All those things work against Joe Biden, and he keeps going down that road. They're talking about taking away guns, taxpayer-funded uh, abortion on demand. I mean, that's where the Biden administration's focusing their energy. Uh, they should be focusing on American energy, and they're not. They're shutting it down. You know, Steve Scalise, just the last one. Um, I appreciate your time very much, as always. Look, um... These high prices, $100 plus oil, uh, and of course, $5 gasoline, but $100 world oil price. We are still financing the Russian war machine in Ukraine. Uh, the reports now are coming in that Russian oil production is now back to the pre war high, which was about 10 million barrels a day. In other words, the sanctions imposed knocked their sales down uh, for a few months. But because India and China are back helping Russia and buying up the oil, they're pretty close to where they were pre-war. So the lack of supplies here, which goes back to the regulatory problem with the permitting and so forth, um, we are still financing Putin's war against the Ukraine. That's where this is leading to. And... Um, I don't know if Biden has anything about that, but that's the practical reality. I'll give you the last word, sir. Yeah, Larry, and, and unfortunately, what you're pointing out is, is, is correct. And we've been talking about this for a few months now. Joe Biden's policies are helping fund Vladimir Putin's war against Ukraine. Before the invasion, Putin was making about $700 million a day mm. selling his oil to America and Europe. We said, look, stop, cut off that supply. The ability for us to cut that off is not just by sanctions, it's by increasing production in America, because that's the only thing that's going to lower the price. There's still, again, monopolies, cartels, OPEC, they limit the production globally. So Putin will continue to benefit as long as Biden shuts off the spigots in America. Open up production here and take that money out of Putin's pocket. Take the leverage away from cartels around the world. Biden won't do it. He'll get on an airplane and go beg dictators. He's begged Putin. He's begged Iran. Venezuela, and now Saudi to produce more, but he keeps saying no to American energy. And I think that's what, what's got Americans irate the most. They know the answer is right here below our, fe our feet. Unlike the 70s, where there really wasn't the technology to go increase production in America, today we do. It's American technology that figured this out, and it's Joe Biden who shut it down. And we make, we make the cleanest fuels in the world, the cleanest Lowest carbon fuels. emissions in the world That's for energy right. is right here. We That's should be right. making more in America, not less. Mr. Steve Scalise, House Republican Whip, we thank you, sir. Leading the cavalry towards Great November. Great being with you. Yes, sir. Thank you.